Hello, welcome to Reformation and Revival Now. We're going to continue our study on what I call the Law of Genesis. So if you have your Bible, turn with me to Genesis chapter 1, and we're going to start reading around verse 14. And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs, and for seasons, and for days, and years. Let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. And God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth and to rule over the day and over the night, and to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good, and the evening and the morning were the fourth day. And once again, God said it is good. Now I said in the uh, close of the last video, I would get into something that's pretty controversial, and that is the study of the stars. Is it evil? Is it wicked? No. But, like everything else that I've been, we've been studying on the study, you have to understand the parameters. So let's go over those parameters to stay on the safe side of this. This is what the Lord says in verse 14, And let them be for, one, signs, for seasons, for days, and for years. Okay, so it's the way we keep track of time. It's the way we keep track of seasons. And when certain things happen in the heavens, we know certain things commonly take place. But that's all it's for. They're markers. That's all a sign is, is a marker. Okay, so if we stay within the parameters of the scripture, then we don't have anything to fear. Because your primary guidance comes from the Word of God in its totality and from the Holy Spirit. That's going to be your primary uh, way of guidance is through the Word of God, not through following stars. And let's go ahead and talk about it. You don't use the stars, the moons, the galaxies, the formations. You don't use that to find out who, who's going to be your girlfriend, who's going to be your wife or what type of promotion you're going to get and whether you're supposed to live in this particular no that's this is where you when you get beyond the boundaries is when you get into trouble you stay with the word of god for signs these are markers for markers okay and for seasons for days and for years now I use that word markers just so i can throw you off a little bit it's a sign. It's not, oh, a mystical sign. It's not that. It's just a marker. It tells you when you see certain formations, things you can expect. And Israel had the new moon. Are there some exceptions? Of course there are. The exception would be the wise men in Jesus. Uh, the, the, the star uh, came and, and uh, stood right over where the baby Jesus was. And the wise men went right to it and they found Jesus there. Now, that's an exception. But you don't go around guiding your life by a star. That is for you to use or to yield to the Holy Spirit and to obey and submit to the Word of God. That's your primary. And that's really where I want to stay in this. God primarily gave the sun, the moon, and the stars for the purpose to give light to the earth. That's the first purpose. The secondary purpose was to be markers or signs for seasons, for days, and for years. That's it. Okay, so if you stay within that parameter, you don't get in any trouble. Not to mention, when we talk about heavens, so far in this passage, we have talked about really two heavens. There is the immediate heaven that you can look up and see. That particular heaven, okay, right that as far as your eyes can see, the blue sky and all that, that's that first heaven, okay? Then the second heaven is what you're getting to outer space and, and all of that, 
which you need a telescope to get you know deep into that and then the third heaven of course it doesn't mention it on this particular passage of scripture but the third heaven would be god's actual throne room but for our study today we're going to be talking about the two heavens and you want to be careful not to break the boundaries here because evil spirits function in these heavenly places and so you don't want to step outside of these boundaries where these things start talking to you and these things start lying to you and these are devils these are demons these are fallen angels they want to destroy you you want to get guidance you go to the word of god you follow the holy spirit and if you do use these, you're just using for generalities, for seasons, for days, and for years, and for certain uh, sign formations, that's it. You don't go and try to get guidance or try to predict the future or say what's going to happen to this person. Because right here, it's, it's there in black and white for you. There's no such thing as using them for that. If it was, it would have said it, but it doesn't. So anyway, the things I share with you are not only to teach you, but to also create boundaries. The boundaries are there to protect you. They're not there to bind you. They're there to preserve life and to keep the devil off of your back. Who hates you? You're made in God's image. He can't stand you. So anyway, I hope this was a blessing to you because it was to me as I look to it. Because, you know, people don't really think that you know god is in, in modern times you know you got to get with the zodiac god's way more advanced than that and it's already in scripture okay but like everything else you have to understand the rules of engagement and for the genesis or the laws of genesis is understanding the rules understanding the boundaries and how to engage remember god said after every one of these days, day one, day two, day three, day four, God said it was good. So God's system is good. The outer space is good. The stars, the heavens is good. He made it. We just need to stay within the boundaries. All right, I'm going to be back in just a little while to share with you what we'll be talking about in the next video. So I'll see you then. There's so much love, so much at this, this school for handicapped children. Special needs is here. And you know what their special need is? You. Someone like you that can help out this school. That's their greatest need. It's not just the challenges they have to go over in a fourth world country, but they need you. So first, put them in the chamber. Here I go, Mabe. Welcome back. Now, before we go, I want to encourage you, if you're at our page right now, to the right side, you'll see a link up there that says the Lord's Prayer Network. If you hit that link, it will take you to our channel, our prayer channel, and it will say the Lord's Prayer, prayer Network, and you'll see seven stations, which are all based on the Lord's Prayer template or outline. Plus, there is a big playlist that will go through all the stations all at once. It's mixed with some videos I made along with some uh, videos that other people have made that are much more popular and successful than what I've done. But the whole key to the site is to get people to pray, to get God's people to engage in prayer for 24 seven. That's our goal. Now, next video, we're going to get into uh, uh, verse 
20. Okay, but you're going to see that the system is now starting to repeat itself. And I think that this is very important. You're going to see God using a pattern here. And it's a good pattern. And it's a pattern that we need to follow. Well, God bless you. And I'll see you then. Bye-bye.